Hello. Welcome to a brand new medical surgical lesson. My name is Jessie Wheatley and I'll be facilitating this lesson. Please have your notebook ready, your notes, and your textbook so you can follow along with this lesson. Thank you for joining me with this lesson. This lesson introduces concepts in critical care nursing for neurological patients. Topics include a brain attack and types of them, traumatic brain injury, brain tumors, brain abscesses. Stroke, head injury, brain tumor, and brain abscesses are examples of neurological disorders that can lead to life-threatening increased intracranial pressure. These impairments may be temporary or permanent, they may be mild or severe, and a permanent neurological dysfunctional death may be prevented by prompt action and recognition of uh, what's going on in aggressive management of the complication presented. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to discuss rapid assessment techniques for neurological patients, understand that patients who present with brain attack or head injury may be confused and deteriorate quickly, provide a quick and accurate decision uh, making ability and establish priorities for care for critically ill neurological patients, discuss examples of different diagnostic aids and medical interventions for critically ill neurological patients, review nursing care aimed at assisting patients and families to cope with their critical illness and changes that are seen in personality or behavior. You want to provide home management available resources and information to patients and families. Let's now review transient ischemic attacks, TIAs. Reversible ischemic neurological deficit may be a warning sign of an impending ischemic stroke. Both warning signs cause transient focal neurological dysfunction resulting in a brief interruption in cerebral function flow and uh, from cerebral vessel spasms or arterial hypertension. A TIA lasts a few minutes to less than 24 hours and um, the reversible ischemic neurological deficit lasts a little bit longer than a TIA. Both TIAs and RINDs may damage the brain tissue with repeated insults. And at this juncture, the patient needs to know uh, that uh, this is something we take seriously. They're going to be placed on anticoagulant therapy and should be aware of bleeding precautions and actions that need, they need to take once they are uh, experience those symptoms. A stroke is caused by a change in neurological um, uh, s blood supply. Uh, the National Stroke Association now uses the term brain attack to describe a stroke, but like that of many health problems, it causes uh, different uh, factors cause it. It can be genetic, a combination of different risk factors. Uh, contributes to a stroke. A stroke is a medical emergency that should be treated immediately to prevent neurological deficit and permanent disability. In an occlusive stroke, arterial blockage and narrowing cause ischemia in the brain tissue and ultimately leading to an infarction of neurons and involved area. Most strokes are ischemic uh, caused by an occlusion or of a cerebral, cerebral artery or a thrombus or embolus. Hemorrhagic strokes involve bleeding within or around the brain um, tissue that's involved as illustrated in the picture there. Uh, the patient may have several diagnostic tests that I've talked about in the notes. Um, document the history of the stroke's onset and the ischemic strokes often occur during sleep whereas hemorrhagic strokes tend to occur during activity. The patient having an ischemic stroke, the standard of practice is to start two large bore IVs with non-dextrose isotonic saline. And uh, immediate primary role for the nurse is to manage the patient receiving treatment and continuously assess for um, increasing intracranial pressure. Nursing interventions are initially aimed at monitoring the neurological changes, the complications associated with the stroke. Two major treatment modalities with acute ischemic stroke include fibrolinolytic therapy and endovascular interventions. The most important factor in which or not to give TPA is the time the last uh, seen uh, normal and uh, the, wind, the standard window for TPA is about uh, three hours 
for uh, from the time that they were last seen no normal. In 2009, the American Stroke Association recommended an expanded time interval from 3 to 4.5 hours for patients unless they fall into the category of being age over uh, of being over the age of 80 and uh, with an INR that's less than equal to 1.7. Okay, so there's uh, different modalities that are being looked into as far as uh, management of stroke symptoms. An aneurysm is an abnormal ballooning or blistering along a normal artery. A congenital aneurysm is a defect in the media and elastic elastica of the vessel wall. A dissecting aneurysm may occur following trauma or from plaque formation as illustrated in this picture right there. Okay, let's talk a little bit about arteriovenous malformations, AVMs. An arteriovenous malformation is a develop, developmentally abnormality resulting in tangled mass of malformed vein wall dilated vessels with abnormal communication between the arterial and the venous system. Clinical history and presentation usually is sufficient to diagnose uh, the AVM uh, or um, is uh, what's presenting uh, with the patient. A traumatic brain injury is uh, occurs when there's a blow or, or a jolt to the head as a result of a penetration object or a bullet or foreign material. And uh, if there's a blow, usually there's a counter blow, as illustrated in that picture, that causes uh, several symptoms. Uh, the nursing management of a traumatic brain injury, I have included in my notes a uh, summary of that, that I need you to make sure that you're reading. The most common responses are going to be hypotension, hypoxia, ischemia, and edema. Increased intracranial pressure is the leading cause of death in patients with a brain injury. Um, then uh, the nurse is going to monitor uh, signs and symptoms of increased intracranial pressure. In the notes, I've included um, understanding of Cushing's triad. And to, for you to remember that this is a classic late sign of increased intracranial pressure. It's not an early sign. And um, I have included uh, more details in your notes. Your notes also contain an overview of brain tumors that can arise anywhere within the brain structures. There's a picture there that talks about uh, some of the common uh, brain tumors that you may see. Uh, they're named according to the cell or tissue where they are located. Primary tumors originate within the central nervous system and they rarely metastasize. Secondary brain tumors result from metastasis from other body areas. Uh, this uh, leads to a lot of cere cerebral edema, brain tissue inflammation, increased intracranial pressure, neurological deficit, hydrocephalus, and pituitary dysfunction. Interventions are going to depend on the size, the location of the tumor, and what it is doing, uh, how it is presenting. And in my notes, I've included details about different things that they may do to the brain tumor. Please take time to review that. A brain abscess is a purulent infection of the brain in which pus forms in the extradural or subdural or intracerebral area of the brain. It most often is caused by bacteria. Clinical manifestations of abscess begin slowly and may include headache, fever, neurological deficits, or nonspecific symptoms. Uh, CT uh, to see if there's any presence of cerebritis and hydrocephalus or midline shift and they may do other tests. The mainstay of management for patients with brain abscess is systemic antibiotic therapy. Thank you for listening in to this quick overview. I hope you have enjoyed the review of critical care nursing for patients with neurological problems. For questions about this lesson or the corresponding notes, please feel free to email me. Have a lovely day.